Connor Clark. Go ahead, Charlie. Thanks, Nico. Hey, Bobby. Um, maybe to start us out with, you know, what you've liked about your team so far, because I think maybe we're seeing you guys maybe at a, a sharper level than than maybe you typically would be at this early stage of the season. Yeah, I think uh, over the first two games, uh, what's been consistent is uh, the guys have gone out and uh, tactically executed. Uh, maybe not 100% uh, towards our liking, but uh, a lot of what we've created, a lot of what we've done has come from you know, what we've worked on in training. Uh, yeah, and as crazy as that sounds, sometimes the game doesn't come out that way. So I think you know that's uh, that's been important in these uh, first two weeks. Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of our high quality opportunities, goals have come from things that we've been preaching, working on, um, discussing with the players. Um, so I think uh, you know that's very good. And then on the flip side too, uh, defensively, I think uh, I think we've been good um, to limit opponents, just doing doing the right things, being a little bit more aggressive. Um, so all around, I think uh, the tactical uh, side is, is coming along very well early in the season. And then just one player that I wanted to ask you about is Mount Duncan, who you know, maybe didn't play a ton of minutes last year, but started in Guadalajara, started both these first two games. What is it about his game and his maybe development here at this club that you enjoyed and, and like in his game? Yeah, Malcolm's... Uh... Uh, a player that I've known for for many years, you know, he probably was 11 years old when he first, uh, you know, uh, showed up to me, and he shows the same excitement and uh, uh, just level of energy of the game that he showed then, and he still shows uh, shows today. And uh, you know, last year he was in here and he did a great job, and you know, unfortunately there's a guy, and I've said this before, Rezard Rama, who did an excellent job uh, playing in that position, um, but we have full confidence in him, and uh, and that's what we're seeing in these in these first matches, including Champions uh, Champions Cup in the f first few matches of the season. You know, he's excellent. He brings an excellent awareness of the game, just an energy level that that is needed for a defender. Uh, because he loves to defend, uh, like I've said uh, on a occasion about another one of our guys back there in the league, and you know he really enjoys that component of the game, and then he can get forward for us. You know, a good tidy on the ball makes things uh, tick and uh, allows things to move, and you know it's been very good with him on the right side and Daniel Parr on the left side. Great, thank you, Bobby. Uh, next, we'll go to David Parks. Go ahead, David. Thanks, Nico. Hello, Coach. I hope you're well. I want to start off by wishing you a happy belated birthday. I saw on Twitter earlier this week it was your birthday, so happy belated. I hope you enjoyed the day. Um, I want to start by asking about Valor because, you know, <laughs> it's a lot of stick online believing, you know, this club is just going to finish bomb the league again. And, you know, obviously losing their first two games so the way they did, people are starting to think that even more. But I'm going to ask, what qualities have you seen from the club in the first two matches that you feel could give Forge problems tomorrow? Yeah, first and foremost, what I've learned in... Uh the first five years of this league, it's uh, not necessarily what you're doing in the in the first two, three games of the season that'll dictate the rest of the season. You know, it's it's consistency. You know, I think Valor, uh, to be honest, has has played a lot better than the results have shown um, for them. You know, they're they've been very aggressive in their matches, uh, probably a little bit unlucky in in certain phases uh, phases of the game. You know, this is a team that's. That I think has changed some things tactically uh, in their game, and I think uh, we could see that from watching the the first two matches. Uh, a lot more uh, aggressive, uh, higher up on the pitch, uh, as as a group, uh, and I think you know that can pose problems uh, to opponents. Um, you know, it's it's early in the year, and obviously they're probably not happy with uh, with having two losses. But uh, in this league, the one thing I know is uh, that changes quickly. And you know, on the flip side, for us, you know. We've always had uh, very good games and tough games against Valor. So, you know, take standings aside in the first two weeks. It means uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely nothing to us. We need to go out there and, you know, continue on the path that I just uh, replied to Charlie about and making sure that, you know, we recognize uh, tactically where, you know, we can exploit the opponent in this game uh, by being good on the ball, keeping a very good tempo um, to the match. Uh, and if we do that, uh, you know, more often than not, good things come to us. Absolutely. And the follow up, um, of course, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, Forge has started with their, both their first two league games this season with the same starting 11. Um, now that um, next week, Wednesday, it'll be the Canadian Championship game against York. Obviously, I know that's still one game at a time, but can we expect to see some rotation tomorrow um, heading to, to, to the game? Obviously, no, it didn't start. Garvin as well in the last first two games. Can we expect to see any rotation at all? Yeah, well, one, the, the good thing is we get Garvin Matusala back in the, into the lineup. Um, into into the 18 so that's a very positive thing because this guy is, a, is an excellent def defender he's an excellent uh, ball playing center back that gives us a different dimension of uh, of how we want to play uh, Noah Jensen's 
you know, had another week of training. I'm back, obviously, a few minutes last week against York, so he's a lot, uh, lot better and a lot more prepared. And it's, you know, it's something we we discuss in this final day. You know, we don't come to conclusions uh, even on the final day before the game on on who's starting. Um, but the most important thing is to keep a good rhythm in the team. I think you know that's that's the biggest thing. You know, it's a, you can't look ahead at different games, and if there's a congested schedule, we've got players, we've got depth to be able to play in these. So that's something we got to find a good balance in. Absolutely. If I can very quickly sneak in one more, um, with how some of the players have been playing in the first two weeks, all the charts, of course, we've, we've spoken about Tristan already, that be, of course, Benny. Um, does it make it difficult for you to make changes to the starting 11 just with how well these players are playing at this moment? Yeah, you always want to take into consideration that match rhythm that uh, that players have and, and and what they're getting. But at the same time, it also makes it easier because, you know, these guys have grown in uh, in confidence too. You know, they've gotten some things uh, as attacking players you want to get out of the way, which is statistics. You know, the attacking players love uh, statistics and goals and, uh, and assists and different things like that. Um, so you know you can look at it. Uh, you can look at it two ways. You know we just you got to balance it. And right now we're playing some good football. I think uh, last game we played some excellent football when you when we've sat back and, and and watched the game. And you know that's about keeping tempo high. That's about doing doing the right things in in certain zones of the field and and making sure we're able to expose certain areas of the pitch. So I think all the guys understand that. You know, we're a team that uh, when we train, we don't train with 11, we train with all 22 or whatever uh, we have out in, in training. That way everyone understands exactly what we want. So that gives us the assurance of, you know, when you move some certain players around, you rotate the squad that you can still keep your, uh, your match rhythm that you want. Perfect. Thank you so much, Coach, and best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, David. Next question goes over to Kevin Anderson. Go ahead, Kevin. Hey, Coach, um, you touched on this a little bit already, but uh, Valor has been a bit of a thorn in the side for Forge. Despite being like a wooden spoon team last year, they always play you tight, really tight. Is this a case of uh, taking them lightly, or is it more of a styles makes fights kind of thing? Yeah, I think it's it's both in, in sport. One, uh, we've seen Valor play a lot of times in, in lower blocks against us, uh, but it's also sometimes a concentration level of a team, and that's where we need to be better uh, as a group. Uh, and uh, and be more consistent in the, in these types of games, um, because like I said earlier, this is a team that's played some good football, some aggressive football over the first two weeks. So there's nothing uh, to take lightly here. You know, we're we're two weeks in. You know, we're not 20 weeks in um, that we can take conclusions from anything from Forge, from Valor, any team in this league. Um, so that's always the important message for us early uh, in the season. Yeah, and. Uh, we need to have that in in mind and, and going out to being able to put in a very good performance. And uh, you know, on the flip side, it's uh, we've had some struggles out in uh, in Winnipeg, and that it's not IG Field anymore. I can't remember the uh, the new name, but I also hear they got some new turf. So hopefully that'll be good for us when we uh, visit out there. I like that. We might have a new advantage with them not knowing their turf. Um, one other thing, we spoke at a press conference last year, and uh, it was during a lull in the team's fortunes. And I wondered if you being mentioned for MLS gigs was a bit of a distraction. And you told me that that's the point. We should all be loving distractions. And we should want to be going further and stuff. Now this year we hear you're on the short list for the Canada men's national team job. Will that impact the team here in the short term? Has anything changed or is it just something that you get to roll with and, and keep your focus? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's the beauty and the evolution of the game. The more people write, the more things uh, get out there about players, coaches. Uh, it's not a topic of discussion in our locker room or, or how we go about our da daily business or you know how I go about it. I think it's uh, the natural uh, evolution of the game and uh, for us it's uh, and for me Valor is tomorrow and uh, York is on Wednesday and whoever's after that and, uh, and that's the 100% focus uh, on that and the, and the players understand that and that's stuff we've talked about in the past not only with uh, coaches but with players uh, when th different things are written it's just making sure that uh, you know we stay focused on what we do best and, uh, and that's football and being here every day and preparing to play a match thanks a lot for answering all the questions there coach good luck thank you